is calculated, so we know that A is worth four points, and B is three, C is two, D is one, F is zero. So for question one, that was worth four units, question two is worth five, question three is worth seven, question four is worth four units. So depending on your grade, so for example, if you had a, a B grade on question one, the grade points for question one is worth four times three is 12. And then for the rest of the examples, you can calculate the grade points. So then to figure out your total grade, you take the total grade points, divided by the total number of units, this gives you your grade point average. And this is the same way you calculate your grade point average on your, on all the courses that you take. So for example, if the grade, this turns out to be, let's see, this is a two point, um, what is that? Two and 14 twentieths, which is a, uh, what is that, two and, uh, Two and whatever. Two and seven ten. Two point seven. So this would two point seven the same as the B minus. That'd be your grade. Okay, so this is how your grade was calculated for this example. Are you guys ready to move on or we to review any questions from the exam? Yeah. Move on yeah. or review. Or no. do you have any specific questions you would like to review? Rather than reviewing the entire exam. Well, I'm sorry. You should review mine. Entire exam. You always pass. Okay, so question four is on the, let's see, that's, um, that's on the last page. So question four states... Question four had to do with the hemoglobin blood buffer system. So for question one, for question eight it says uh, HHGB is the acid present in our lungs. What force is the HHGB plus O2 going to HHGB O2 for the product? So for that one, so this is question four A. Okay, so this is the form of hemoglobin in our lungs. And where does the O2 come from? This comes from the air that we inhale. So if we want to force this equilibrium to the product side, all we have to do is inhale. Because that increases the amount of O2 in our lungs, and according to Le Chatelier's principle, by increasing the amount of reactants, that's going to shift the reaction for the product side, and we're going to produce more that. So that's all I was looking for there. For question 4B, which acid is stronger, HHGB or HHGBO2? So, for question 4B, you want to look at the pKa, so if you have H. HGB going to H plus plus HGB. This is the conjugate base of uh, HGB. The pKa is equal to 7.7. .7. And for the other one, HGBO2. The pKa is equal to 6.2. We call that pKa prime. So remember that pKa is equal to, is related to Ka, so Ka is equal to 10 to the minus pKa power. So if you do the calculation, you would see that the Ka for 
this reaction is larger than the Ka for, sorry, the Ka for this reactant is smaller than the Ka for this one. So it turns out that the smaller the pKa, the stronger the acid. So this is going to be the stronger acid. Okay, so again, lower the pKa, the stronger the acid, or the higher the Ka, the stronger the acid. And for question 3, 4C, two acids and two bases are present in the blood cell. In other words, these four substances are present in our blood. We want to figure out, based on the pH of blood, which is 7.4, which substance is present in the highest amount. And then the hint was, what equation do you use? And the equation you can use to do this, answer this question, is the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. And that equation states that pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base divided by the acid. So what we want to do is plug in our numbers. So the pH of blood is 7.4. For HHGB, the pKa is 7.7. .7. The base is HGD, the acid H, H, GD. So what we want to do is we can solve for this ratio. So if we do that, that would be equal to, let's see, 10 to the uh, minus, let's see, 10 to the minus 0.3 power. Uh, if I did my math correctly there, that's going to be equal to, um, let's see, that's equal to 0.5. So 0.5, 0 to 1. So in other words, for every 1 HHGB, there's only 0.5 HGB. For the H HGBO2, you can use the same equation. Again, solve for the same for the ratio of base divided by the acid. And in this case here, 10 to the 1.2 power is equal to 15.8 to 1. So note that there's 15.8 HH, sorry, 15.8 HGBO2 to HHGBO2. So based on these two ratios, the substance which is present in the highest amount is the yeah, so the HGBO2 is the substance present in the highest amount. Now the other way you could do this, if you didn't want to use a didn't want to do a calculation, is look at the titration curve. Okay, so for the H, HGB, it looks like this. So this is the, this is the halfway point. So for the H, HGB, this is going to be a pH of 7.7. .7. So note that at pH 7.4, this can be right in there. So at this point here, based on the titration curve, is there going to be more acid present or more base? There's going to be more acid present. And then if we take a look at the other one, okay, so you can draw a titration curve again. This is our halfway point, this is 6.2, and 7.4 is here. So that's going to be like over right in here, right at the edge of the buffer region. So at this PA for HHGBO2 is going to be more acid present, more base. There is going to be more 
I think you guys are ready to move on because I know you're, I see, you see your eyes are glazing over, over. So that means you're ready to move on from, from this exam. So at this point here, there's going to be more base presence, so that's the other one. What you can do is you really want to do a calculation for that part there. Okay, are there any other questions on the exam? Or you, or you didn't have enough coffee this morning? <coughs> so the four questions seemed like uh, the first page, question one and two, were the most difficult questions. Can you do 3C? 3C. So question 3C says, if you want to make your straight hair a perm, that is make it curly. Actually, I guess I, I didn't quite, I made a, a grammatical error in that sentence. Anyway, a perm involves making sulfur-sulfur bonds, meaning the sulfur and cysteine has a negative charge. And then it says, uh, let's see, at what pH does cysteine have a negative charge? Actually, I made a mistake there. It should have been the sulfur and cysteine have a negative charge. Draw the structure of cysteine with this charge. And I hope at this point in the exam you are not thinking of the cysteine chapel and thinking of, um, you know, looking toward a higher spiritual power to get you through the exam. <laughs> okay, so anyway, for cysteine... Okay, so this is structure of cysteine, which you were given. So let's see, for this proton here, the pKa is equal to 8.33. This proton has a pKa of uh, 1.71. And this proton has a pKa of 10.78. Now, which proton is going to be the first one removed? Yeah, so this is going to be the first proton removed. Which proton is the weakest acid? Yeah, so this is the first one removed, which means that this is this the strongest acid or the weakest acid? Yeah, so this is the first one, this is the strongest acid. Which one is the weakest acid or the last one removed? Yeah, so this is the weakest acid. So when base is added to cysteine, so we're going to add base, say hydroxide, this is the first one which we remove. So then the structure of the cysteine is this structure. As more base is added, the proton which is removed next is this one. So, as more base is added, then the last proton is going to be removed. Going to be removed. And then let's take a look at the charge itself. At low pH, we're going to see this form of cysteine, so the charge is equal to plus 1. As the pH increases, the charge on this one is going to be equal to zero. And for this one, the charge is equal to minus one. And then for this one, the charge is equal to minus two. So at what pH do we see cysteine with a minus one charge or a minus two charge? 
Okay, so for this one, we can also look at the titration curve. Okay, so there's going to be three endpoints. There are three halfway points. So we know that the first halfway point is at 1.71. The second halfway point is at uh, 8.33. And the third halfway point is at 10.78. The first endpoint is going to be at, uh, let's see, add these two together, divided by two, so that's going to be equal to 5.02. 5 the second half, the second endpoint is going to be the average of these two numbers, which is going to be 9.55. And then we got to do a calculation for this one and for that one. Let's skip that for the time being. So let's see. So at the first half weight point, what's going to be the charge on cysteine? Plus one. Plus one and? Zero. Yeah, zero. So we're going to have half of the plus one and half of the zero. So at the first end point, the charge is going to be zero. At the second halfway point, it's going to be 